thought it would be fun to compare the chain stitching functionality on my Kenmore 1914 and my Singer 431G. So what I'll do is I'll explain how you convert them from standard sewing into chain stitch and then we'll look at some of the outputs so the results and what you can and can't do with the chain stitch on these machines. The tests I've run on this um, have been quite informative. What I realized with this type of knit it just doesn't support the chain stitch very well so a bit of this is just what a single layer of water soluble stabilizer resolves all of the uh, problems I had with these machines just not doing stable stitching. So what you can see here is the are these loops. If I go on if I sew the chain stitch under 15 uh, stitches per inch, so lower than that, or what looks like from this, so below the the fifth, 15, I think it is, it might be 12 or 16. So below, if I go above that, few more stitches than that, and that works out at about one, two, one and a third millimeters per stitch length. What happens is it doesn't pull the loop here. You can see where I would, I've been just adjusting it. And then what happens is it, it gets too small so that it forms the second loop before it's pulled through the first and you end up with this rat's nest. Of course, you could argue that you could want to do a shag pile in some sort of fashion things and that does uh, enable you to do that. It uses a, a lot of thread, but you know, if you use a large spool, it doesn't matter. This is with standard sort of 40 weight thread, and I've tested it here is 40 weight embroidery thread, and here this variegated is, this variegated here is also standard 40 weight variegated. I did run a test with what is essentially top stitching thread, so you can see it's quite a lot thicker there. And it is possible. It's a bit noisy, but it works very well on this machine. You just need to make sure that you put a longer stitch length, because the thread is so much thicker, you couldn't go down to that. It would just end up with a rat's nest. But as long as I've set this to the maximum stitch length here, and I've gone down to I think roughly eight stitches per inch, which works out to just over three millimeters. But you can see here I've reduced it down to sort of its minimum, and it looks very attractive. It's very, very nice indeed. And that, those are the results you can get. So on the reverse side, it just looks like a straight stitch. And you can see the thicker threads there, the thinner threads, the thinner threads, and then the thicker threads. So I was trying to see what this would look like, you know, crossing like that. So it's possible to sew across. So I may basically want to start decorative stitching. I'm going to move design and put it on this exact fabric. That's part of the reason for the test, because I'm going to make a t-shirt. I just haven't quite figured out the color combinations to use yet so that it works for me. change this machine from standard sewing to chain stitch, you need to make sure you have the right bobbin race, but by default if you've got the standard bobbin race for the 411 or the 431G machines, it comes with this little lip here, which I'm hoping you can see in the sun, there, and that sits over top of this. When they went to the next series, the 600, because I don't think any of the 500s did chain stitching, I could be wrong, but I'm not aware of them. But when they went to the 600, they changed this mechanism, which has been the source of annoyance for all 400 series owners, 
because they moved this to this side and changed the whole bobbin concept. But what makes the chain stitch plate important, aside from that, is this long hole. And that's because you've got to pull through double stitch, double threads through that hole as you're sewing. So there needs to be enough room, hence they, they have this longer, bigger hole. On the reverse side, you've just got this, and what that does is that sits on top of that metal thing that sits out there on the bobbin race part. And then you just make sure it's in the right place, push it down, and then you thread the machine as normal with one exception. Here, you just have to make sure that on this side, when it's going down to the needle, it goes through that hook. It does say to leave that open, um, but I found it's fine closed. Just a point of interest here, what you'll notice is that that hook is pretty much in the highest level. I found that it needs to be quite high up, and there's a little grub screw inside here, you can see there, which allows that hook to go up and down. And what I found is if it's in the highest position, it tends to give quite consistent um, chain stitch. If it's lower down, it doesn't seem to work so well. I've just a lot of people said they don't like the chain stitching on this machine, but I have always managed to adjust it. Now it's possible for longer stitches and stuff, you can adjust that up and down for a particular project, but I found in the highest position it works very well. On this machine, you don't thread it any differently at all. Okay, so let me just pull through. One second. On this machine, you thread it as normal. All of the magic happens below. So again, with this machine, you have to have the chain stitch plate, but in this case, you'll notice there's no lip thing. It's just a larger hole. That's the only thing about that plate. However, what does become important is this. So this is what converts it into a chain. You'll see that tiny little nub there and that slits into a hole. Oops! Drop. Great. Um, in the hook. So it just pops in and then that's it. Away you go chain stitching. So let me grab the thing which I dropped and I'll be right back with you. I've taken off the cover so that I can get at the free arm. So if you look here on the lower side you can see that little hole under here. That's what that little nub in the hook goes into or this adapter for the change and you just push it in. Once it's in, that's it. Nothing more magical than that. And then it's good to chain stitch. So for this machine what I've found is that around 12 stitches and below up to the max, or and above, sorry, to the maximum number of stitches works. One never re reverses. And what I found with this machine, again, I did these tests before I really realized stabilizer would have been very helpful. And you can see I've done, you know, up to 12 and a little bit higher, and then the standard. And the quality is quite good, but again, you have to watch your stitch length. If you go too small, you can end up, or too big in this case, this machine tends to act up in the reverse direction, but if we try it with stabilizer, that problem may go away. But you can go to very small stitches on this machine, and the consistency of the stitch is really, really good. It works extremely well for chain stitching. Okay. What I will do is allow you to hear the sound of the machines. I'm going to do two different types of thread here. One is the top stitch weight, and then this other one is the standard weight. This is standard weight. I've got the machine set. Obviously, it's straight stitch, tension one and a half, 12 stitches per, per 
inch. And off we go. Just need to adjust my uh, speed limiter a bit. And that should work this time. I've put the stabilizer on top. It could be on, on the bottom or on the top. It really does not matter. In this case, I put it on the top so you can see the stitches against the cotton. So there's a row at 12 stitches per inch. What I'll do is I'll turn the corner, spin a couple of stitches, another one, and spin this again. What you can see is perfectly formed stitches, you know, beautifully formed. So let's decrease the number of stitches per inch, and we'll go down to 10. Straight through. I haven't put any um, temporary adhesive here, so I'm just making sure I keep this smooth. And we'll spin, do this, three this way. Okay, let's just validate the quality of the stitches. Yep, they're fine. You can see they're, they're a little bigger now. And I'll give you a zoom in a second. I think I've already done that. Yeah. So now we'll go down to eight. Stitches this direction. Okay. And then, as you can see, perfect quality there. There was the 12, 10, 8, and now we'll go down to 6. I've not tried this before, I'm assuming that'll be fine, but we'll find out. Fine. I'll just zoom in here. You can see the 12, 10, 8, and 6. So perfect stitches across the board. Now what we're going to do is switch to the larger top stitching thread. So we will only do a few of these um, because the thread is so thick. I've not tried this on this machine before, so it would be interesting to see what happens. If the machine likes it or not. Okay. I might need to adjust the tension settings because it's so much thicker thread, but we'll find out. It's part of the fun. Ooh, that's. I don't know. This is already in there. Okay, now hopefully I might need to change the needle. I just realized I don't probably just have a small needle here. Um, yes, okay, I need to change the needle. One moment.
less, so tension needs to be much higher. Go up to six and a half. Perfect. So we'll sew it. Lid needs to be open. And tension about six and a half works perfectly. So we're good. This machine will do all of those as well. Here I've got 40 weight embroidery thread set at the longest stitch length. And off we go. There's a sound it make on the longest stick. And we will go to the end here. Validate that it's fine. Pivot. Perfect. So perfect looking stitches there. What we'll do now is we'll do a couple of stitches here and go up to eight. Spin again. And off we go at eight. Again, perfect stitches. What you can see is the length. How it, go, how it adjusts on variegated. I'm going to do a couple of stitches here. Go up to 12. And spin here. Last but not least, just under the 16, which if you go beyond it will make a rat's nest, but will it's perfect. And that's Let's make sure that's yeah, that's fine. Snip, yank, and voila, from the back side. So we're right on the edge there. You can see occasionally, oops, helps if I show you what I'm doing. So see occasionally it's too short there. Definitely slightly longer would be more appropriate to avoid these little catches where it's not doing quite right now. Perhaps if I increase the thread tension a bit I might be able to prevent those but I'm not bothered because the 6, 8, 10, 12 
are perfect anyway. And my favorite length out of all of them is the really the the ten gives the nicest depends on the the look you want whether you want long or the ten gives very 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 good results. Okay, I will change over to the thicker thread now. I've changed nothing on from tension or anything else on this machine. The only thing I'm doing now is changing the stitch length, shorter stitch length with this thicker thread. The other thing I found that The other thing I found is seems to be important as well is you don't necessarily want to use that because the thread has to do a, a tight turn. Sometimes the results might be better if you don't use it. Same as when you're using double twin needle, you put one thread through that and one not. So I'm, I found it just kind of seems to be more reliable if you don't use it. Off we go. You will hear more noise now from the thread pulling past the hook. Let's see how much noisier it is, but that's okay, the other machine was noisier. Too. And perfect results. You can see the difference in the thickness of the thread and how it, it impacts it a lot. That's why you can't go too short with this much thicker thread. I will go up to 8 just so you can hear it. And off we go. Again, perfect results. So you can see how beautiful we can make these things look just by using the chain stitching. It's not puckering the fabric at all because I've used this water soluble stabilizer, and once we wash it out, give really nice results. Okay, so I hope you find that found that helpful and interesting.